But this is the headline. It just happened moments ago. The Wall Street Journal confirming what's been reported from the camp, that they're going to have a speech at 10 o'clock. They're going to make an announcement at 10 o'clock. We already know there were no events planned last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know that there's no events planned to go forward uh, to compete in Georgia and the other states, that Donald Trump would salt away the to get his delegates and salt away the victory officially. So she's going to come out today. So this is some of the intriguing moments. Does she do what Ron DeSantis did? Right. Ron DeSantis came out, shot, surprised everybody, and mm-hmm. said, before New Hampshire, I'm out. Donald Trump, I'm endorsing Donald Trump. Right. Wow. Donald Trump's camp was caught by surprise mm-hmm. by that. They thought there might have been a call. It's her interaction. There really hasn't been more interaction since. Now, when Vivek Ramaswamy drops out, Tim Scott drops out, he says, not only am I out, where are you going to be today? I'd like to join you on stage. Ron DeSantis says, I have a job to do. I'm going back to Florida. So they're kind of on... Maybe I'll see you at the convention. Right. Will Nikki Haley say, Donald Trump won, and if anything it needs to my party to win, I'm in? Uh, and I endorse, or will she say, Donald Trump won, I enjoyed the race, mm-hmm. I'm going to get reattached to my family, and I'm worried about my husband over in Africa. Yeah. Uh, that's, those are some of the intriguing things. Well, whether or not she drops out, everyone was suspicious mm-hmm. of this, because she said, I'll at least stay till Super Tuesday, and then she didn't schedule any other events right. after that. And then they released a, a statement last night just saying, we were watching with all of our staffer, staffers as the results were coming in, we're watching from the Charleston area. They called themselves happy warriors, mm-hmm. the staffers, and they said the mood is jubilant. She has a house out at Kiowa Island, right off the coast of Charleston. So I'm wondering if she just wanted to be home, reflect everything, watch these results, and then make a decision. Well, I- Friends, join us. We have a spectacle. Also, it took three months to build, so I don't want to waste it. I give you the war wolf. Oh, yes! We are back, baby! Back, baby! Last night was... Storybook, man. Last night, baby, was a movie. Is that what the kids say? Last night was a movie! Well, we were making movies, and Trump was making moves, and now Nikki Haley has moved out of the way! All good things must come to an end, and all bad things also must come to an end. Nikki Haley will be dropping out in moments, and we wanted to be live to cover it. Ladies and gentlemen, all bad things must come to an end, and Nikki Haley got it in the end. It looks like she's just live right now. Okay, Nikki Haley, live right now. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Rock and roll. Drop it out. Okay, not getting any audio. All right, we're going to fix the audio, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's go. Take her off screen. Let's fix the audio, Royce. It's on. It's just quiet. It's Fox News. I'm going to get some Okay, we're going to get something else. We have a backup feed. Nikki Haley dropping out live right now. Today is Wednesday, March 6, 2024. Nikki Haley is about to drop out. We are getting our backup feed. For some reason, our audio did not work. Trump dominating Super Tuesday and... Ladies and gentlemen, we will have multiple special guests on the show. My name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are efforting Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley dropping out live. And only getting Here we go. It is filled with followers, not leaders. Term limits for Washington politicians are needed now more than ever. Our world is on fire because of America's retreat. Standing by our allies in Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan is a moral imperative. But it's also more than that. If we retreat further, there will be more war, not less. As important, while we stand strong for the cause of freedom, we must bind together as Americans. We must turn away from the darkness of hatred and division. I will continue to promote all those values as is the right of every American. I sought the honor of being your president, but in our great country, being a private citizen is privilege enough in itself. And that's a privilege I very much look forward to enjoying. In all likelihood, Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee when our party convention meets in July. I congratulate him and wish him well. I wish anyone well who would be America's president. Our country is too precious 
to let our differences divide us. I have always been a conservative Republican and always supported the Republican nominee. But on this question, as she did on so many others, Margaret Thatcher provided some good advice when she said, quote, never just follow the crowd, always make up your own mind. It is now up to Donald Trump to earn the votes of those in our party and beyond it who did not support him. And I hope he does that. At its best, politics is about bringing people into your cause, not turning them away. And our conservative cause badly needs more people. This is now his time for choosing. I end my campaign with the same words I began it from the book of Joshua. I direct them to all Americans, but especially to so many of the women and girls out there who put their faith in our campaign. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for God will be with you wherever you go. In this campaign, I have seen our country's greatness from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, America. God bless you. Well, that was short and no questions, and she's out of here. Well, hot damn, I'm glad we were live right at 10 o'clock. Nikki Haley on C-SPAN. Ladies and gentlemen, dropping out of the race, wishing Donald Trump well? Is that a tactic? Is that a tactic endorsement? I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, not exactly sure. Did Nikki Haley endorse Donald Trump there? That was is the will be the Rorschach blot test uh, of the next couple of well, next couple of hours that we will be live because uh, fr quite frankly, we have a lot to cover on this program. Nikki Haley dropping out. We heard the reports starting this morning at 7 a.m. that Nikki Haley was going to drop out, broke by the Wall Street Journal, and she just dropped out. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's go ahead and clip aways. Let's go, boys. Let's get some takeaways from that speech. I definitely want to hear what she says about Donald Trump. She says she wishes him well and that she's been an inspiration to all the young women in the world. Um, very classic Nikki Haley stuff there. Uh, short, uh, short, it must have been less than five minutes. Nikki Haley was in and out. And so uh, the inevitable has happened. Donald Trump is the Republican nominee. It's Donald Trump's been the Republican nominee, I would argue, since, I don't know, since he announced he is running for president a year ago. Donald Trump has run a perfect campaign. Is it just me? Is this like a dog whistle? Is something going on? Are things going, happening too well? Does Donald Trump run a perfect campaign? Donald Trump ran a perfect campaign, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and won yesterday. Uh, every single state, except for Vermont, which... Um, all right. Nikki Haley has won Washington, D.C. and Vermont. Bernie Sanders has three houses in Vermont. Vermont is filled with Democrats. Vermont is a, ba a bastion of uh, crunchy white liberalism and people who would totally be willing to switch parties to vote for Nikki Haley, which is exactly what happened in Vermont. That's precisely what happened. A lot of these people, and we can prove it, a lot of these guys, a lot of these Nikki Haley votes are libs who switch parties and vote for Nikki Haley and then say that they would vote for Joe Biden in the general election. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll prove it all, but let's begin. The rematch is on. Donald Trump steams through Super Tuesday on a train with no brakes, winning 14 states and setting the scene for a second face-off with Joe Biden in this year's presidential election. Nikki Haley dropping out of the race just moments ago. Did she endorse Donald Trump? I mean, that really is the question. Boys, I want to like, I want to get, I want to get her comments and I want to play them back because I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. Is it, it did she actually endorse Donald Trump? We're going to play it back. We're going to play it back. Um, do we know for a fact that the Republican Party has endorsed Donald Trump? Uh, let's get the map up. Let's make sure that we uh, that we sort of show what 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 it looked like yesterday. Look at that red wall. You could now 
I'm not sure how the panhandle connects there to Colorado of Oklahoma, but I think you could drive from coast to coast in Trump states, from California to North Carolina, you could drive through Trump states. This is Donald Trump dominating last night. These are the results from Super Tuesday. Donald Trump winning in most of these states by a massive, massive preponderance of votes. You could see, let's hover over some of the states like, uh, like Texas and North Dakota and uh, Minnesota. I mean, you Donald Trump winning by 70 points, 60 points, uh, 50 points, 80 points. And most importantly, in Colorado, this is really interesting. In Colorado, Donald Trump getting 100,000 more votes than Joe Biden. In the state of Michigan, Donald Trump got 150,000 more votes, actual raw votes cast than Joe Biden. And meanwhile, in Minnesota last night, tens of thousands of people, vote Democrats in the closed primary, voted against Joe Biden. That's a massive glaring warning signs. There are lots of glaring warning signs, ladies and gentlemen, um, for Joe Biden and for Nikki Haley. The official turnover of the Republican Party to the MAGA movement is complete. The keys have been handed over. The neocons are DOA. They are not just like on life support. They're not just sitting there with their Joe Biden uh, life alert, punching the button. They're just finished. They're done. It's done. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, we knew that it was done starting yesterday. Nikki Haley versus Donald Trump in like a straw poll done on Fox News in a Texas diner. It was my favorite clip of the day, without question. Uh, listen to this. This is like what... This is what a real poll sounds like when you ask real Republicans about Nikki Haley. I'm not talking about Kiki, Nikki Haley's cuck soy boy Democrat voters who are voting for her because they're leftist, crunchy, uh, wine mom, suburban wives tell them to and box them about the ears. I'm talking about actual Republicans. This is what happens when you get a room of actual Republicans together in Texas and ask Haley or Trump. But I did a quick straw poll. Ainsley, Steve, Brian, Lawrence. Um, let's just take the temperature as we start the morning here in Texas. If you are for Donald Trump today, Super Tuesday, let me hear you. Yeah! All right. Anybody here for Nikki Haley? Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Boo. One dude in the back. Bovine in the back. It is Texas, ladies and gentlemen. There are cows in the kitchen. So here we go. These are the Nikki Haley uh, comments uh, just about Donald Trump. Her total comments were less than th less than four minutes. Her total speech was less than four minutes. Um, perhaps we'll. I don't. I don't feel the need to play the whole thing. We have both loaded up. Um, I think that we should just play the Donald Trump part. The Donald Trump part was one minute of a three minute speech. So <laughs> what does that tell you? Who's on the mind here? So Nikki Haley said this about Donald Trump. And I quote, I wish him well. And I wish all people who wish to run for president. Well, Donald Trump is our Republican nominee to beat Joe Biden. Uh, does she endorse? Have a listen. And we'll talk about it, okay? Here's what Nikki Haley had to say seconds ago when she dropped out in a three-minute-long speech. Short. Here's what she said about Donald Trump. In all likelihood, Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee when our party convention meets in July. I congratulate him and wish him well. I wish anyone well who would be America's president. Our country is too precious to let our differences divide us. I have always been a conservative Republican and always supported the Republican nominee. But on this question, as she did on so many others, Margaret Thatcher provided some good advice when she said, quote, never just follow the crowd. Always make up your own mind. It is now up to Donald Trump to earn the votes of those in our party and beyond it who did not support him. And I hope he does that. Wait, okay, so I just didn't realize how sharp the dagger was from Nikki Hillary. I'm sorry, I've been mis I've been misnaming uh, Nikki Haley, Nikki Hillary. Nikki Hillary, we call her on this program. We call her Nikki Hillary, ladies and gentlemen. Nikki Hillary just pulled a whole cloak and dagger shiv to the side for Donald Trump. So let's break down this quote. 
In all likelihood, Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee when the party convenes. I wish him well. I wish all people who want to run for president well, is what she said. Uh, so in all likelihood, she doesn't say Donald Trump's the nominee. Donald Trump's literally the only person still running. In all likelihood, Donald Trump will be, oh man. And then she continued, let's get the full quote here. This is really important. She continues to say, I wish all people who run for president well. So wait a second. She doesn't, she didn't like actually endorse Donald Trump. She straight up endorsed Joe Biden. That's what Nikki Haley just did. Nikki Haley just endorsed Joe Biden. Wow. So effectively, Nikki Haley is endorsing all people who run for president. So Trump or Joe Biden. And then she uses some mealy mouth Margaret Thatcher quote. And she's like, don't just go along with the crowd. I'm Margaret Thatcher. I'm a legend. I'm I'm just so iconic. Me, slay queen, me in my heels that are ammunition for some reason, somehow. Remember that tweet? <laughs> we'll get into it. There's a lot of reasons why we just like Nikki Haley. A lot of them are personal and a lot of them are professional. Okay? It's not all personal. It's not all professional. It's both. Ladies and gentlemen, Nikki Haley said, um, I'm not going to just follow the crowd. We'll see if Donald Trump can win my support. I am queen. I am the queen of the swamp, as Donald Trump called her. I am the queen of the swamp. I... I am in charge of the Republican Party. <laughs> the delusion. Put the map up. The map. Ladies and gentlemen, the delusion of Nikki Haley. Man, this these remarks are actually now pissing me off. Now that I'm re-listening and listening a little bit closer. Unbelievable. These remarks. So she's now saying Donald Trump must grovel at my heels and win my vote. This is what Nikki Haley's saying. What a monster. So many reasons why... I'm okay with this. Uh, the reason why I'm okay with this is that Nikki Hillary is actually the thorough embodiment of Hillary Clinton for the modern era. She is, she is what Hillary, because she will serve as the heel the way that Hillary Clinton did in 2016. There's a sorting going on. There's a massive sorting going on. Now, Nikki Haley loves Hillary Clinton. She's told us many, many times. So this, this stands to reason. Nikki Haley is, by every measure, Hillary Clinton in this race. And so expect her to potentially do everything she can to sabotage Donald Trump. Mark my words, that's coming. Nikki did worse than just not endorse him. Nikki said that she's straight up going to endorse Joe Biden. I wish all people well who run for president. Hey, Robbie, get me the rest of the quote. I want the rest of the quote. I want. I, I, I can't believe, I can't believe what she just said about Margaret Thatcher. And then she goes on to say, I'm not going to follow the crowd here. Donald Trump must grovel at my feet. And in, and maybe Donald Trump will just endorse me because he's just the likely nominee. He's just winning every damn state except for Vermont. So this is really, really breathtaking. I, 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 I frankly, I'm like, like, I just, I just can't, I just can't believe it. Look, look, look at this map. And then look at Nikki Haley won DC and she won Vermont. And how did she do it? Democrats. Democrats voted for her. We have the proof. We have more proof than we could ever want, but we'll play it for you. Here we go. Nikki Haley, uh, yesterday, someone was speaking with a Nikki Haley voter. Some cocked so soy boy guy right there, doughy dude, is like, I'm a Nikki Haley supporter. And then he said something that made the reporter gasp. Watch. I just do not really agree with Trump's rhetoric and all of his. Well, not all of his policies, but I just think that the Republicans deserve a better choice, and I think that's Nikki Haley. Is Nikki Haley someone you feel like you could vote for in November? No. I will vote Democrat um, in November. I will vote Democrat in November. Save some chicks for the rest of us, bro. Wow. Don uh, this is the, the perfect Nikki Haley vote. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, Donald Trump uh, makes me so sad. I'm so sad at Donald Trump. Uh, salt in my eyes. And I don't like his rhetoric. His rhetoric. So it's much better for illegal criminal aliens to go and slaughter young women uh, that are nursing students named Lake and Riley. That's the kind of rhetoric I want. But at least the, the words are buttery and they reach my ear and they're so special to me. These are the Nikki Haley voters. So you're gonna so are you gonna vote for Nikki? So you're gonna vote for Donald Trump? No, I'm gonna vote for Joe Biden. Would you vote for Nikki Haley in 2024 in the general election? No, I'm gonna vote for Joe Biden. Why are these guys so easy to find? 
Because they're all Nikki Haley. These are This is all of Nikki Haley's supporters. We have like 20 of these guys lined up. Here's another one. Nikki Haley. And why did you vote for Nikki Haley? Uh, it's a vote against Trump. Uh, I think it would be better to have her against Biden in the uh, elections than it would be Trump and her. Do you consider yourself generally independent, Republican, or Democrat? Uh, Democrat. So when you undeclared, you voted for Nikki Haley. If it was Nikki Haley against Joe Biden in a general election, who are you voting for? Joe Biden. What is the... So Joe Biden. I'm voting for Joe Biden. But time and time again. We have more of these. We have, we have a bunch more. We have more of these dudes. So it's like soy boy cuck betas, low T, that come like, that again, like they're, li- they're living with their wife, right? They're living, li- they're living with their wife and her boyfriend, you know, all together in a, in a one room apartment. And the wife is like telling her husband and her boyfriend, like both you guys better go out there and vote for Nikki Haley in order to stop Orange Man, Orange Man bad. Orange Man bad. And so they go out, they like, they, they, they grab their soy, uh, they grab their soylent uh, and the, a straw, and then they go go waddle down to the open primary. Why the hell do we have open primaries? Vermont's an open primary. Here we go. Map again. Vermont's an open primary. Here's the Vermont. Vermont Nikki Haley won Vermont by like 3,000 votes, I think. Something like that. Yeah, Nikki Haley won Vermont by 3,000 votes. There's the total. How many of these guys voted? How many of these people voted? I think we have another one. I, I, I want to like, prove the point again. Can we get the CBS clip from Iowa? CBS was like, oh, uh, in Iowa's most liberal county, Nikki Haley, the one county Nikki Haley won, they ran out of voter registration flip cards so that Democrats could vote for Nikki Haley. This straight up CBS reporter calling the game from a thousand yards out. And why are Democrats voting for Nikki Haley? I can, pr- I can show you. Give me, how long do I need? Give me 30 seconds and I'll show you. Watch this. You'll see exactly when Democrats are voting for Nikki Hillary because they're the same people. In fact, Nikki Hillary's psychosexual political fetish is actually legitimately Hillary Clinton. The reason we got Donald Trump in the first place. How long is how long has Nikki Haley like been been sort of like creeping in the wings here? It makes you really wonder like what the game was from the start. How does somebody like this rise through the ranks of the Republican Party? It really makes you wonder how centrally organized and planned this all is. An important reminder, of course, that Nikki Haley's biggest donor is the one who funded the lawsuit against Donald Trump. Reid Hoffman, LinkedIn uh, founder, co-founder. So, oh, uh, she has Democrat donors, Democrat voters, Democrat policies. And now the people who like inspired her to run for office are all Democrats. Nikki Haley, a Hillary Clinton plant? Not exactly sure, but she sure as hell would love to plant herself around in Hillary Clinton's lap. Watch. If you have to lie to win, you don't deserve to win. I never said Hillary Clinton was an inspiration. You know, I often say that the reason I got into politics was because of Hillary Clinton. I didn't know her, although I had met her several years before at a women's professional event in Greenville, South Carolina. At that event, she had inspired me to run for office and make my voice heard. And in some ways, she remained inspiring. She is actually the reason that I made the jump. Because you write about her being a big inspiration for you. I went with my friend Eleanor Kitzman to a firm and leadership program where Hillary Clinton was speaking. And I walked out of there and I said, I'm running for office. Honey, you're not a Republican. I hate to break it to you. Don't mean to do this live. Um, but you're not a Republican, you're a Democrat and your supporters are Democrats and they're proud Democrats. In fact, they literally tell corporate media that they're Democrats. I don't want to let this clip. This is probably the last time we get to play this in 2024. I don't want to let this clip die. And I don't want to go, uh, without playing it one last time. Cause this was when the game, we were in Iowa. We went to Iowa. We were there on the trail. Trump campaign headquarters, Vivek campaign headquarters, doing Tim Cast and everything. Like we were out with candidates, talking with people. Didn't find a single Nikki Haley supporter. Not in any of the Republican counties. Iowa's a Republican state, Trump country. Trump wins by 10 points in Iowa, 2016 and 2020. So like, where were the Nikki Haley supporters? I couldn't figure it out. Where were they? 
There's a single county in Iowa where the university is, of course, where the Marxist, it's like a Marxist safe space, like a sanctuary city for communists. I would know that because I went to the University of Iowa uh, for school, uh, along with community college. And so this county called Johnson County, no relation, uh, this county is where all the libs live in Iowa. And there was this amazing CBS report that came out of that county. It happens to also be the only county that Nikki Haley won. And it went like this. They ran out of party switch affi party affiliation switch cards and registration cards because so many Democrats were showing up to vote for Nikki Haley in order to try and piss in Donald Trump's punch bowl, right? Here we go. Here's the actual report. This shows you everything you need to know about Nikki's campaign. Uh, Major, it's been a very interesting night. They just finished uh, voting. This was a room in favor of Nikki Haley, overwhelmingly so. Ron DeSantis second, Donald Trump a distant third. The most interesting development of the evening, and Anthony Salvanto will, will find this to be very interesting indeed. They had 50 forms for people who wanted to register tonight or switch their party registration. They ran out of those forms. Members of the caucus team here had to run out to multiple people's homes to get printer paper and get their printers fired up. They printed another 25 or so sheets of paper. They estimate about 75 people were new registrations or switched their registration from Democrat to Republican in order to play in this caucus tonight. And I think that's a big reason why Nikki Haley uh, was lifted up. You're getting a little noise here as they clean up. Uh, was so uh, impressive in this particular outing. If she can repeat that, because we're talking about 20% of the vote here, thereabouts, give or take, uh, were new registrations or crossovers, and that is above the typical rate. You see estimates about 10% in a typical open caucus. So if she can outperform in counties like this one at caucus sites like this one, then that bodes well for her ability to have a strong second, which of course is what her campaign really wants to drive the narrative into New Hampshire. She's a Democrat. I mean, I, I, we, we, we've revisited it time and time again. The only reason that Nikki Haley is winning in these states or won in Vermont or won in Washington, D.C., the queen of the swamp, the only reason is that Democrats showed up to vote for her. Now, this, of course, stands to reason because Nikki Haley not only postulates Democrat positions, but she campaigns like a Democrat. Nikki Haley used vicious and sinister and venomous identity politics in order to defend herself. So what happens every time that Donald Trump attacks Hillary Clinton, right? Oh, you're doing it because I'm a woman. You hate all women. How many times you hear that? He hates women. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, you can look at how women voted. That message didn't actually resonate. But Nikki Haley went right back to it. They have a women problem. Now, he, she wasn't talking about Donald Trump, although she happily would say that same thing. She was talking about Vivek Ranswamy, who completely bodied Nikki Haley uh, on, uh, on the RNC debate stage. As soon as Nikki Haley realized that she had been called out as a warmonger, as she as she had been called out, obviously, as a as a DC swamp queen, and as a Democrat hiding in wolf's clothing, sheep's clothing, both, I guess. Warmonger hiding in warmonger clothing, stamped with the seal of approval from Boeing, Nikki Hillary had a meltdown. She goes crawling to some irrelevant sw like swamp creature podcast run by a bunch of McConnell bros and started whining that Vivek Ramaswamy doesn't like her. She's been mean to her because she's a woman. I'm a woman, she says. He's mean to me because I'm a woman. Where have we heard this before? This has no place. This kind of like identitarian intersectional feminist politics has no place in our party. No place. No place. I was so disgusted by this. Vivek had legitimate, legitimate broadsides against Nikki Haley. And then she goes off to play the, the woman card, the race card, the gender card. No place in Republican politics for this. We are fighting against this thing, right? You should be judged by the content of your character. You should be judged by your moral compass. You should be judged by your actions on this earth, not your immutable qualities that you were born with. This is not a get out of jail free card or put your opponents in jail free card if you're talking about Donald Trump. But here's Nikki Haley doing the exact same thing, the running the exact same race Hillary Clinton ran in 2016. Go. What happens? He comes out of the gate. He hits 
the female chair of the party. He hits the female anchor on the platform, and then he hits me. And I'm not saying anything. I ain't saying I'm just saying. But he might have a girl problem. (laughs) I'm just saying he might have a girl problem. Oh, okay. He has a girl problem, you see. Talking about Vivek Ramaswamy. Nikki Haley's full remarks, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Right down here at the bottom was really what I wanted to uh, focus on. But here we have the full remarks. I have always been a conservative Republican and have always supported the Republicans' nominee. But this question, but on this question, ooh, interesting. But, (laughs) but, Margaret Thatcher provided some advice. Never follow the crowd. Always make up your own mind. I'm a strong woman. I don't need Donald Trump. Donald Trump needs me, Nikki Haley says in her comments. So let's let's go to the um, whole, whole, I've always been a conservative Republican thing. This is uh, really important. Um, have you, actually? Here's this unbelievable clip of Nikki H- Hillary and Liz Cheney together. In, you know, yeah, like, you, like you know, uniparty, like a uniparty explosion, like soy gimp suit explosion at this joining together of Nikki Haley and Neo, like Neo, this is Neo Con Cella, Neo Con Cella, Neo Con, Neo Con Cella, Coachella. I, I'll work on it. So Nikki Haley and Liz Cheney together talking about how Republican they are. Mm, yes. Is this the future that you want? Thank, praise God. Thank God for Donald Trump. This is not the future of the Republican Party. This is the old guard that is now officially uh, gone. It's it's over. It's finished. They've plotted. Okay? They're done. But this is Nikki Haley being a forever a conservative Republican. Watch. If you go into just about any nursery school in America today, probably around the world, you will see that the little girls are running circles around the little boys. Uh, and I say that as a proud mom of both girls and boys, um, but the girls are running the place. And so I have often wondered what happens. Why is it that women are not yet anyway running the world? And I think part of it is um, risk aversion. What really jumped me over to say I'm gonna do this is I was at the Furman Institute and actually Hillary Clinton was the guest speaker. And she was, they're giving a speech to a few hundred people and she said everybody's going to tell you why you shouldn't do it and that's all the reasons why you should mm. oh mm. slay queen oh mm. hillary clinton so inspirational liz cheney and nikki haley sitting there talking about how that mean old donald trump and cited an erection and Nikki and, and it's Hillary Clinton. It's, it's Hillary Clinton, who's our girl, because girls are running circles around the boys. That's right. Mm. You go to any nursery in America, and those girls are running circles. By the way, if you go to uh, nurseries in America, how many of the uh, people that are currently using public resources and nurseries in America are criminal illegal aliens? That, of course, Nikki Haley said, you're not allowed to say those words. I'm just asking questions here. Estimates are between 10, 20, 30 million. How can you run a society with 30 million people that came here illegally? You can't. How do you have public, how can you have public services for people that don't pay into the public services? Don't pay into taxes. Don't pay a penny into social security yet collect social security. That's not viable. It doesn't work. That's societal collapse. It's Cloward Piven societal collapse. The two Marxist professors from 1960. How do you how do you destroy a country as prosperous and happy as America? Well, you have to swell the welfare rolls to the point where the actual currency and systems collapse. Social security checks have never been late until the day that they are done. Social security is always paid. Yeah, until the day it all collapses. And then there's no more social security n- n- until there's no more money, right? Until the dollar is utterly worthless. Country after country has gone through this. Nikki Haley wants you to look the other way. And most importantly, you shouldn't use mean names when you talk about criminal illegal aliens. Watch. But let's keep in mind, these people that are wanting to come here, 
they want to come for a better life too. They have kids too. They have a heart too. They, so we don't need to be disrespectful. We don't need to talk about them as criminals. They're not. They're families that want a better life and they're desperate to get here. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we have some breaking news here, some absolute, absolutely shocking breaking news. Um, Mitch McConnell, on his way out, has just endorsed Donald Trump. Okay? Well, that's interesting. Mitch McConnell (laughs) just announced that he will be endorsing Donald Trump. Let's go ahead and uh, click through the article here, and uh, let's let's go ahead and read. Um, Mitch McConnell... Oh, the article is a sort of sort of breaking news. Okay, I hate it when they do this. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell endorsed Trump this morning. It is abundantly clear that former President Trump has earned the requisite support of Republican voters to be the nominee for President of the United States. He said in a statement, "It should come as no surprise that the nominee I have will have my support." Says Mitch McConnell. Uh, Mitch McConnell actually didn't say anything. Mitch McConnell just stood there like this. That's that's actually what Mitch McConnell did, Um, but his team pecked out this little statement. Great job, Mitch. Really good job. Uh, Another sign of what Nikki Haley was inside of the Democrat Party, which was a cloak and dagger, third rail, dark horse to run on the inside track to come after Donald Trump. This was a Nikki Haley was an op. Nikki Haley was like somebody who was planned, who was planned and ran. As a Democrat, by Democrats, supported by Democrats, funded by Democrats, voted for by Democrats. As a absolute sign, a, like, ray from the sky, okay, uh, that shines very brightly and burns, actually, the skin. Shows you exactly what Nikki Haley was. An announcement this morning from the White House, Joe Biden intending on courting Nikki Haley voters. Joe Biden plans on going after them Nikki Haley voters. Oh, wow. Joe Biden intends on getting Democrats to vote for him. Here's the report from the White House seconds ago. From President Biden a few moments ago on Nikki Haley dropping out of the race. And I want to read you part of it. Uh, It says, quote, Donald Trump made it clear he doesn't want Nikki Haley's supporters. I want to be clear there's a place for them in my campaign. I know there's a lot we won't agree on, but on the fundamental issues of preserving American democracy, on standing up for rule of law, on treating each other with decency and dignity and respect, preserving NATO and standing up to America's adversaries, I hope we can find common ground. Uh, So that is pretty significant to hear President Biden trying to court uh, the moderates and the independents who voted for Haley. uh, And this is sort of in line with what we expected the Biden campaign take to be. You know, after Super Tuesday, they. So, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Biden is officially going after that Nikki Haley vote. It's just so nice when it all lines up so beautifully. Last night, okay, moving on to Donald Trump. Last night, Donald Trump, victorious, obviously, uh, winning by commanding leads in many states, in most states that didn't have open primaries where Democrats can vote for Nikki Haley. Donald Trump just just dominated, right? California, Donald Trump winning by what? 30? Goodness gracious, Donald Trump... (laughs) That's unbelievable. So Donald Trump winning by 65 points in California, same margin pretty much across the country. This is a movement. Uh, this is a mo- this is obviously Donald Trump winning in spite of all of the free press that Nikki Haley gets, in spite of all of the Democrat donations Nikki Haley gets, and in spite even of the Republican Party, the people inside of the Republican Party, the mix of the Republican Party, McConnell, McCarthy, McDaniel. Uh, Kevin McCarthy, too, last night, like coming out and, and like Kevin McCarthy went on Fox News last night and was like pseudo endorsing Nikki Haley. Insane. OK, so Donald Trump, uh, again, like wrapped it up and made this the party of Trump last night, like now and forever. That debate is officially finished. Here is Donald Trump's speech from last night. Our success will be unity in our country. I say good luck. I don't have so, the problem is that there's so many people have had their brains broken. It's truly like had their brains snapped with orange man, bad TDS uh, microbes implanted in their heads. 
Everyone's worried about Neuralink. This is like the actual, this is the actual chip that gets implanted, right? TDS, Orange Man Bad, think, and they just flip the switch, right? And these guys go out and like vote for, vote for Nikki Haley's because their wife's boyfriend told them to. Anyway, Donald Trump last night uh, with a packed Mar-a-Lago, a rowdy Mar-a-Lago, uh, basking in his success and also looking very presidential, very calm, very in control. And most importantly, like a guy who's run uh, what I would argue is like a perfect campaign. Come at me. Come for me. Has Donald Trump run a perfect campaign? Like, find me the mistakes that Donald Trump has made. Has Donald Trump made mistakes? I I don't think so. Like, you, you're going gonna, you're gonna to have to actually show me, like, what catastrophic thing he's done in the campaign. 2016, there was, like, all, you know, there were quite a few scandals, call them what you will, ups and downs. Like, Donald Trump is running a tight ship. And that was on display fully last night. Ladies and gentlemen, it is officially over. It is Donald Trump's party now. Go. Because you wouldn't have, think of it, all of the problems that you have today, I don't think you would have had any of them. You'd only have success. And that's what's ultimately going to unify this country and unify this party. We have a great Republican Party with tremendous talent. And we want to have unity. And we're going to have unity. And it's going to happen very quickly. And I have been saying lately, Success will bring unity to our country, and it happened before. We had the best economy our country's ever had, and people were calling me that I would have said will never happen. It'll never happen. They wanted to get together African-American, Asian-American, Hispanic-American, women, men, people with diplomas from the best schools in the world, and people that didn't graduate from high school. Every single group was doing better than ever before. And it was a beautiful thing. Our country was coming together. Our country was coming together. Unity will be our success. Um, I, I'm going to ask you to do something, a mental test, um, a little mental experiment here. But I'm going to ask you to, like, rewind your brain to the year 2018, maybe 2019. Um, they psyoped us, right? They psyoped us with COVID. And I don't want to jump into where COVID came from. We've done tons of talk about where COVID's come from and how COVID was created and biowarfare and so on. But I don't really want to cover that right now. I want to like talk about the general overall like psychological damage that COVID did to what they were truly trying to hurt, which isn't your brain and it's not your children, although they don't care about either of those things. They really cared about Donald Trump. And they were trying to hurt the fact that Donald Trump was winning. Donald Trump had officially united the country. Donald Trump was going to go, was heading into, in the year 2019, and ALX, this is, I, I want to, can you grab me that Donald Trump, Donald Trump Daytona 500? There's like this, mo there's like this crystallization moment of like Trump gearing up to truly unite the country into a like 40 state romp in 2020. This was before COVID, like everything got, everything got destroyed, but the, the stock market, the jobs, like, like the shutdowns, the lockups, the lockdowns, all of it, granny in the hospital, all those things were just these like psychotic damaging moments for mass formation psychosis to get you to not pay attention to how good things have gotten. Gas at a buck a gallon, no new wars, the leader of North Korea welcoming in Donald Trump, even though the nations are at war, you know North Korea's at war with us? They never signed a peace treaty for the Korean War? It's like 50,000 Americans died in the Korean War. North Korea's like fought, killed Americans, vice versa. We were bombing North Korea, 1950. They never signed a peace treaty, yet the leader of that nation is welcoming in Donald Trump and clapping him on the back and hugging him at the border. What was that? You weren't stopping that. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is dead. You weren't stopping that. He died like a dog. You weren't stopping it. There was, there was, there was no, um, there was no rolling that back. Donald Trump was heading on his way to a 40 state romp of whoever the Democrats put up, whoever. Don't care if it was Michelle Obama. And this is what Donald Trump 
is attempting to uh, reignite, right? It, is, it can just be a play beside ALX. I mean, just to be the play beside, like attempting to reignite. There's this like sort of iconic scene. This is right before COVID where Donald Trump took the beast, the presidential beast and flew. He flew into the Daytona 500, uh, did a did a flyby in Air Force One and then took the beast on the track. The jets, the planes, Americana, the strength, the power, gentlemen, start your engines. Using the beast as a race car on the track, Trump and Melania standing for the national anthem. Guys with their Trump shirts on, a hundred thousand people, a hundred thousand people at Daytona and the infield in the outfield and the stands using the beast as a race car legend. It's things of legend, ladies and gentlemen, boom. And that was the America that three years of Trump had created. I believe this was early in 2020. I think I'm getting the date right here. This was like February of 2020. Um, before these vicious, sick, demonic monsters decided that they were going to destroy it all. An evil man, an evil man, there's a quote that like comes, it's about Nero and ro fiddling while Rome burns, literally playing the fiddle while Rome burns. An evil man would gladly rule over a nation of ashes just as long as they are ruling, just as long as they have power. And so it is important to look at the results. The nation is uh, turning to ashes because of the um, psychotic bloodlust for power of the left. They have utterly failed. Nobody supports them or their policies. Uh, their failures have cost Americans their lives and have destroyed uh, a once great country and a country that was very much on the rebound under Donald Trump. They can't have that. They must have global order. The thing about power is that it's never enough right? Like absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Is the, 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 the saying power is never enough. And so they have to have global control. And for that, they need to have America not be independent. They, they must have America cowed. They must have America as a third world nation that can be controlled very simply and easily corrupt our people, corrupt all nations and corrupt our minds. And that is why Trump is so threatening to them. And you saw it last night in the re reactions to Donald Trump's victory. You saw it last night in the reactions to how the corporate press uh, were covering Super Tuesday. This, ladies and gentlemen, is really, really a masterclass in people who decide that instead of going to the therapist couch and instead of um, taking their taking their bite stick right to the, to the to the therapist's couch with their SSRIs, they decide to instead go on national TV and have their meltdowns. We begin, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with the CNN rock salt flowing down the tears, tears, tear filled faces, quivering lips, holding back tears, CNN admitting this is the party of Trump. There is no more neocon Republican rhino cuck party. This is officially the party of Trump, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's salt these libs. I think this is going to be a really good salty lib clip. Uh, I love this. CNN demonstrating that this party, party, well, the party for the neocons is over. The party for MAGA and America First and populism is just beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, get out your salt shakers. I want to see salt flowing through the comments. Let's salt these libs. <laughs> percentage of it has actually jumped up even more. It's 88 percent of the delegates. So you're looking at the percentage. Uh, Donald Trump cannot mathematically clinch tonight, uh, but he can get within 100 or so uh, of what he needs. And he can do that next week. And so what you have here is, you know, he has remade the party in his image. There are there are still some Republicans who are trying to take it away, like take it back. All right. That's over. That's over. There's no back. That party, that party doesn't exist anymore. Right. It just doesn't. You know, it just doesn't. Look at the House of Representatives. I'll look at what's happening in the United States Senate. Mitch McConnell stepping aside. 
uh, you know, and some of the more governing conservatives trying to keep their power even just within the Senate Republican conference. This is a new Republican Party. Uh, and so you have a very formidable Republican frontrunner who has re remade the party in his image. And I the weaknesses come in the sense of uh, uh, in very much the way you're talking about how he is reforming the Republican Party. Right. More working class, class people, including uh, voters of color, right. African-American uh, men primarily, but also Latinos. CNN straight up admitting it. This is the party of Trump. There is no more neocon party. There is no more globalist Republican cucked party. They're done. Their day is finished. And now this is the party of Trump. Donald Trump has remade the Republican Party with working class and minorities. Ooh, that must have been painful. Oh, the salt must flow. Ooh, I'm loving all the salt. I'm just staring at the comment section right now. So much salt, just pouring. You're going to love this. Donald Trump just posted for the first time on uh, Truth Social about Nikki Haley. Donald Trump, Nikki Haley got trounced last night in record-setting fashion, despite the fact that Democrats, for reasons unknown, are allowed to vote in Vermont and various other Republican primaries. Much of their money came from the radical left Democrats, as many other voters, 50% according to polls. At this point, I hope she stays in the race and fights it out to the end, saying that she wants he wants Nikki Haley to light Democrat money on fire. It's actually a smart strategy. I'd like to thank my family, friends, great Republican Party for helping me uh, for helping me to produce by far the most successful Super Tuesday in history and would further like to invite all of the Haley supporters to join the greatest movement in the history of our nation. Biden is the enemy. He is destroying our country. Make America great again. Boom. That energy is back, baby. That's the energy. That's the energy. And you're seeing in the reactions of the corporate press last night that that energy is scaring them a lot. That energy is uh, causing quite a panic because they don't have an, uh, they, they don't have another option now. I disagree strongly um, with Vivek, something I haven't said on this show, but Vivek continues to say that they're gonna like get rid of Biden. We'll see who's right. I actually think they're stuck with Biden. I think they're riding with Biden. I think they're stuck with him. We'll see, we'll see. Let me know in the comment section. We'll pin a poll. Do you think Biden will make it to 2024? I think this is a big question. Michelle Obama coming out yesterday being like, I will not run for president ever. Okay. Well, who's next? Who, what are they going to do? What are you going to do? Liz Cheney? And the reason why I'm confident in this is that the meltdowns are really something. The meltdowns are really, really remarkable. There's a... Uh, the meltdown that I that I really really like <laughs> from Joy Reid, somebody who hates Donald Trump so much that she went into her barber shop and said, "Give me the Donald Trump hair." Joy Reid saying, "Bro, bruh," she goes, "Bruh." Amazing the discourse on MSNBC from from your betters. Remember, Joy Reid went to Harvard. Okay, bruh. She goes, "Bruh." The reason Trump doesn't look old. <laughs> is because Donald Trump's been playing golf and Joe Biden's been running the country. The cringe, the seething, the searing. We've already played one salt that lib, but please feel free in the comment section to salt as much as you want. Here's Joy Reid saying, the reason why Trump looks better than Biden is because Trump's been playing golf. <laughs> Go. Donald Trump had one job. He had one crisis. He's saying, oh, all of these things were perfect. You had one crisis, bruh. It was called the pandemic. And you know what you did? You bollocksed it completely. You did so poorly at managing your soul crisis. The one hard thing you do, the reason he doesn't look old like Biden looks older, the presidency <laughs> ages you when you do the job. Obama went gray because he was doing the work. Donald Trump looks the same as when he ran because he was playing golf the whole time. His one job you, you think was that to manage. Color's natural? <laughs> oh, that's it. But the reality is, he had one job: manage this crisis, and he, he he messed it up so badly that they had to do the stimmy. People love the stimmy. Why did he have to do the stimmy? Because a million bodies are in the ground. It was because Democrats. of how poorly he managed an yeah. airborne it was the virus. Plan oh man, they're bringing back code. They're bringing it back. The old playbook's back. Here you go, baby. <laughs> did they make a comment? Did I hear that correctly, that clip? Is she making a comment like, is your hair color natural? 
Is that Stephanie Rule? Did Stephanie Rule make that comment during the clip? They're like laughing about Trump's hair color? They're laughing about Trump's hair color? You're laughing about Trump's hair. You. Well, well, well. How the turntables turn, as Michael Scott would say. They have nothing. Well, like their argument here is that Donald Trump spends too much time golfing. Dude, have you seen Joe Biden? He's been on vacation for like 400 days. Have you seen Joe Biden? Like on the beach with his shirt, he's like taking his shirt off, like flopping around on the beach. Like a, like, like a, like a piece of chum that was tossed out of a bucket. Looks very, look, look, translucent and gross and flabby. Ooh. Yeah. Th and then you're going to say that Donald Trump golfs too much? Got it. Okay. This just proves they have nothing. Proves they have nothing. And you're going to expect, expect to see as the panic sets in, expect to see more mistakes. This was the entire show yesterday. Expect to see more mistakes. The mistakes, by the way, oh, this is good. Can we play this beside? This is, this is the, <laughs> the J Donald Trump looks better than Joe Biden because Joe Biden's been working and Donald Trump's been golfing. Yet I have this video. Why do I have this video? Does this look like Joe Biden is working? No. This once again looks like a Visiting Angels retirement community ad where you lock up uh, the olds in your family because they don't have the strength to move an armchair. Look at this. He doesn't have the strength to pick up the chair. Look at that. He look he looks like a beach jellyfish that like got caught in some wire. That's his hair because it's not his real hair. It's all plastic. D D uh, Joe Biden lost all of his hair in the 70s. There are photos of Joe Biden in the 70s, bald as a bat. So yeah, whatever skin, whatever... You know, whatever skin suit they were able to strap on the lizard person that is Joe Biden, that's that's it. It's not looking well. I joke. I joke. But ladies and gentlemen, um, it's not going well for Joe Biden. They don't have they don't have anything to talk about as far as accomplishments. Joe Biden, hundreds of thousands of Democrats have now voted uh, uncommitted in the Democrat primary process. That's pretty scary. And more importantly, Donald Trump is winning in overall votes in all these states including states like Colorado, Minnesota, Minnesota, and uh, Michigan. Donald Trump is winning in overall vote. He's beating Joe Biden in like the vote totals. So how are you going to get, the, how, are you, how are you going to pull this horse over the finish line? Don't know. But here's what I do know. The, as the panic sets in, they will begin to make more and more mistakes. We talked about this yesterday. This is a, this is a psychological phenomenon that as you begin to get rattled, as your cage gets more and more rattled, you begin to like lose, you're not making good decisions. You don't make good decisions. Everybody knows somebody who's like spiraled out of control in their lives. This happens. As you stop making, you stop making good decisions, uh, you actually get yourself into sort of like a death spiral here. And you can see that last night. MSNBC, on the heels of multiple Americans, I mean, we're starting to lose count, multiple Americans getting slaughtered by criminal alien crime that they imported by emptying the prisons in every third world hellhole and bringing those people over into our country, giving a welcome mat, Joe Biden flying people into the country, flying people. In. There's an app. You can just download the app, punch a button, and you'll get flown into America because the border's too scary. So we'll just fly in the criminal aliens. As the criminal, as that issue becomes the number one problem in America, because everyone is start, are, are starting to like actually see the results of that. Our downtowns and our cities are starting to look like third world hell, hell holes. People are beginning to, Lake and Riley, but there are many others. There are many others. The separation of the leftists inside of their, with their private cars, inside of their hermetically sealed little bubble, little bubbles in downtown Manhattan, although not even downtown Manhattan, is liberated from this, not even the Upper East Side in New York. I mean, that's that's where a lot of the crime is. New York police officers getting beaten in the streets. And the people who are the criminals doing that, the gang members getting released by New York. So these people aren't even protected themselves anymore. It's going to affect them. But nonetheless, on full display, these bubble-wrapped libs last night, snickering and laughing 
about people caring about immigration as a big issue. Jen Psaki, Chucky, as we used to, pe Chucky or Peppermint Patty, we couldn't decide. It's either Chucky or it's Peppermint Patty. Let us know um, in the comment section, which one do you like more? We're gonna go with Chucky. So Chucky last night was chuckling that she lives in Virginia and illegal immigration is not a problem for her. What's what's wrong with Americans? They're just so wrath, wrath. Listen, listen to this again on the heels of Lake and Riley's slaughter in Georgia. Um, despicable. Watch. I mean, if you look at some of these exit polls, I mean, I live in Virginia. Immigration was the number one issue. <laughs> yes. I mean, again, these could change in, in Virginia. Well, Virginia does have a border with West Virginia. <laughs> very, very contested but you're area. Build the wall. Like, what? It is uncanny. It is uncanny. So they're laughing. They're, they're literally laughing at the death of Americans. Good. That clip will not age well. Just play that clip in every single district. Play it again and again and again and again. Again, we have to reiterate, Nikki Haley is a Democrat plant. That's why Democrats last night were begging Nikki Haley to stay in the race, including this, one of my favorite clips from last night, MSNBC begging Nikki Haley to stay in the race because you don't have another job. You, like, you, you don't have a job, so you might as well just keep running against Drumpf, right? Orange man bad, right? Go. Yeah. yeah. I, what, what's Haley going to do? <laughs> like, I mean, what, I mean you know, same thing she's been doing. Why stop? Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess that's right. I mean, I guess the money keeps rolling in, uh. right? If you can still continue to fundraise. It doesn't cost her anything there. to keep campaigning. She doesn't that's have right. another job. Nope. It's true. I mean, the point of I guess if you win a state. I mean, I guess I'm just sort of like running the math on the outcome here. So uh, you don't have a job. Why don't you just keep running? We need something. We need help. We got to figure out how to stop Trump, they say. And they, they, they literally scream it from the rooftops. And they say it out loud now. The therapy, the therapy panic meltdown session on MSNBC last night was something to behold. This is possibly my favorite clip. Like, we need to fact check Trump even more. Now, this is like, this is an interesting little phenomenon. They don't even take Donald Trump's comments live anymore, right? So you've noticed that when Donald Trump gives speeches and victory speeches and stuff, they won't even cover him live because they can't, they can't stand it. They did this all throughout 2016 and Trump got elected. And so now they're in a desperate ploy. They're just going to try and like not take Trump's speeches live. Good luck with that when the guy becomes president. But here they are again on the therapy couch, SSRIs flowing, half drank bottles of cheap Chardonnay rolling around on the floor, MSNBC having a meltdown that they don't fact check Trump enough. Remember this guy, they, they deleted him from social media. Hundreds of millions of followers, hundreds of millions of followers. I'm not sure he was the most followed celebrity in the world, but he was up there and they just deleted him from social media, but they don't fact check him enough. That's the problem, watch. And we have no choice. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it is, uh, okay. I will say that it is a decision that we revisit con constantly mm -hmm. in terms of the balance between allowing somebody to knowingly lie on your air about things they've lied about before and you can predict they are going to lie about. And so therefore it is just it's irresponsible to allow them to do that. It's a balance between knowing that that's irresponsible to broadcast and also knowing that as the de facto, soon to be de facto nominee of the Republican Party, uh, this is not only the man who is likely to be the Republican candidate for president, but this is the way he's running. Well, here's how we we'll balance it. Yeah. Why don't we fact check the hell out of him? Yes, and we do that after the fact, and that is the best remedy that we've got. It does not fix the fact that we broadcast it. But it's honestly. stunning that he's saying these things yeah. and people are hearing it. Let's just go through it, right? That we have the most devastating economy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we have had the best economic recovery of any country in the developed world. <laughs> we've melted down all the printing presses and reduced the value of your dollar. And now nobody can afford a home or a burger from Wendy's. Now Wendy's has surge pricing for their burgers. Got it? 30 years ago, your parents were like, let's buy a house, honey. And, 30, and, and today, you're like sitting there with scraggly, there's like a meme of this, like a scraggly beard, like 
I hope I can afford a Wendy's today. We'll see what the price is of my burger. Great job, Stephanie. Rule. You rule. And then, like, moaning and bitching that they can't cover Trump in real time. <laughs> he lies. He lies to us. Remember the lie that Joe Biden told that Antifa was an idea? Joe Biden literally said this during the 2020 presidential debates as Antifa was murdering people and burning uh, half the nation to the ground, it seems like, um, but doing devastating damage, obviously. There were members of Antifa. I lived in Washington, D.C. at the time. They were like, it was ubiquitous. Members of Antifa uh, were like roaming the streets, like at all times. It was crazy. I was physically there when a buddy of mine, Jack Posobiec, uh, got like physically attacked by Antifa, like surrounded by Antifa, and they were like going to potentially harm him. There's like an iconic photograph actually of this, of of these these absolute moggers like like surrounding Jack and coming after him, and they had, like they had, like gear on. So Joe Biden lies and says Antifa is an idea during that time, and that Antifa isn't real. Well, lo and behold, not only is Antifa real, a member of Antifa was arrested and charged with seven felonies for breaking into the Capitol on January 6th, 6th dressed as a Trump supporter. <laughs> Inconvenient, that. But also, ladies and gentlemen, oh yeah, here's the photo. But also, ladies and gentlemen, look at the, look at the literal members of Antifa surrounding Jack um, and spraying him with water, like assaulting him, right? They're like surrounding Jack and like spraying him with water. And here's, yeah, here's the other one. Oh, yeah, but Antifa's an idea. Got it? Antifa's just an idea, you see? That 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 person isn't real. Okay. Like our economy. It's not real. Like Joe Biden's prefrontal cortex. Not real. So, last night, in an interesting turnabout, Van Jones, former Obama guy, left-wing radical, uh, he himself admits that not only is Antifa real, but Democrats are going to need Antifa to win. Ooh, uh, that's kind of scary. Democrats must create a coalition with Antifa, these uh, neo-Marxists who are violent, who are like the foot soldiers uh, for the Mark for communists, and they always have been. Like 100 years ago, go back to Weimar Germany, 100 years ago, Antifa, or they, they, and, and in Italy, Antifa, when Antifa was actually formed, like, they, they are the foot soldiers for the Communist Party. Their job is to hurt you. Their job is to burn down your cities. Van Jones openly saying they're going to need Antifa to win in 2024. What do they have planned for you and me? Ooh, whatever it is, it is not good. We got to win here, baby. We must defeat this, like, vicious ideology. It is dangerous. Quite fr It's just straight up dangerous. Watch. We got we got to hold together a coalition that's every goes from the the never Trumpers mm -hmm. to folks who might have marched with Antifa. That's a hard coalition. You can just say you agree with me. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Antifa. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm saying that's how broad our coalition. Well, I mean, we got to make sure that Antifa's on our side. Let's <laughs> come on, come on, the people that people that burned down Minneapolis, people that literally murdered in the street, people that attacked innocent Americans, and, well, quite frankly, got away with murder. The people that were at the uh, Trump 2016 inauguration and did this, you know, all these guys got out of, all these guys were uh, released from prison in Washington, D.C. There were like thousands of them charged. There were thousands of Antifa members that were charged for disrupting an official proceeding, yet they all got off. Not a single one of them, like, did any jail time. Amazing how that works. Get out of the cities. Get out of Washington. Oh, here's here's a wonderful Antifa's an idea. That's what this is. This is just this is to see the the Antifa sign that's been spray painted on that car. It's just an idea. It's so much of an idea that now Van Jones is saying we must unite with Antifa in order to win. Ooh, baby, they are desperate. I think that Laura Ingram summed it up the best last night. The American people are sick of. Democrat leadership, and they are ready for the greatest comeback in American history. Here we go. A little bit, maybe three or five percent. 
think they're going to come from working class people. I think a lot of the Haley voters are protest voters. They're never going to vote for Trump. And I don't think she has a lot of sway over them. So I'm not sure what her bargaining chip is. I think tonight we should look back at the people who proclaimed Donald Trump's political death. Um, Donald Trump is finally finished. New York Times, November uh, 2020. Relax, a Trump comeback in 2024 is never going to happen. Politico. This could be the greatest political comeback story of all time. I mean, maybe some of you can remember something better than this, but if he pulls this off in November, and it's, a, you know, it's an if, but even to get to this moment, pretty much everyone was declaring him DOA. What does that say about all of us? I mean, maybe, maybe we need to spend more time with the American people, or at least I do, because I had my doubts at various times as well. And it says quite a bit about him. Yeah, he knows the pulse uh, of the people. As a politician and as an individual, he has yeah. a lot of pull with a lot of people across what? this country. <clears throat> but the greatest political comeback ever. That is precisely the energy. That is it. Now, there was a little bit of energy. We have to cover this because I've seen, I'm have seen i seeing this clip ping pong ball around. It was top of my feet on X this morning. Uh, we have to cover this. MTG last night at the Trump victory party. Trump gives a great speech, not a particularly long speech. Trump gives a, a great speech. Um, there were a couple of states that hadn't even been called yet. And Trump came out, gives very like um, presidential, I think it would be the right adjective for this, uh, talks a little bit about uniting the country. Uh, but there was some energy in the room that <laughs> some, sp some spirits in the room that needed to be exercised. It was a, uh, British reporter for some tabloid I've never heard of that uh, was talking to Marjorie Taylor Greene and was like, hey, why do you love conspiracy theories? Why do you love Jewish space lasers, she says to Marjorie Taylor Greene. And Marjorie Taylor Greene decided um, and sort of like encapsulated the energy of the rest of America, which is we're just so done with this. We're just so sick of it. Like the ploys, the plots, the scams, the hoaxes, they just don't work anymore. They don't work on us any longer. Like enough. Marjorie Taylor Greene had um, a very, a very uh, exciting two-word statement for this journalist, right? Let's go. <laughs> uh, legend, Marjorie Taylor Greene, why don't you just F off? Elon Musk responding to this clip. <laughs> I actually have space lasers. <laughs> Oh, having more fun than we should be legally allowed to have, ladies and gentlemen, on this program. It is such a special time to be alive, and you shouldn't miss it. You really shouldn't miss it. If you looked uh, there uh, inside of where Marjorie Taylor Greene was, she's inside of uh, Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago. There's a lot of gold leaf in that room, and there's a lot of gold all over Donald Trump's properties. That's because gold connotes and projects value and it has for all time and quite frankly it's how the new world was founded the search for gold and so ladies and gentlemen you should uh, consider as you watch uh what's happening right now with the american economy and as you look at the price of gold hitting all-time highs you should consider investing diversifying just a bit right into something that's not the american dollar i don't have a lot of faith in the people that are running the place right now donald trump gets back in fine but whatever you're still not gonna donald trump's the guy who like covers all of his buildings in gold so, ladies and gentlemen, you should go gold. You should go with my allegiance, my friends at Allegiance Gold. Ladies and gentlemen, consider it. Do it now. They're only going to devalue the dollar more. The, the value of the dollar is not going up. But the price of gold and the value of gold is going up. Go to protectwithbenny.com today. Protectwithbenny.com today. Or call 844-66-BENNY. Right now, get up to $5,000 in free silver with a qualifying purchase. Don't get fooled by inflated stock values. With the promise that the economy is stable. It is not. Protectwithbenny.com today. Oh, baby. All right. So there is a state that is, um, well, it's not a state, it's a territory that has delivered something very exciting yesterday. Territory called America Samoa uh, delivered a loss to Joe Biden, which is really funny. Uh, Joe Biden has lost the Democrat caucuses in American and Samoa to some dude named Jason Palmer. <laughs> Jason Palmer looks exactly like the guy who shows up from Redfin when you want to go tour a house um, and is like the the poor guy that's like that that has to schlep over uh, to like show you the house you're definitely not going to buy. Poor Jason Palmer. Actually, great Jason Palmer. 
We invite Jason Palmer on the show at any time. American Samoa, let's go. I want to hear what Jason Palmer has to say. Uh, really like this guy. Never met him. Don't know him. Don't know anything about him. Just really like him. Just really like him. So this guy beat Joe Biden yesterday. Uh, moving on to a state that Joe Biden must win, North Carolina. North Carolina. Trump dominant in North Carolina. Uh, Trump won walking away with it. It was, I think, the first state that was called or the second state that was called last night. Donald Trump uh, delivering dominant performances there. Uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, we got more good news for the state of North Carolina. Mark Robinson has won resoundingly the nomination to be North Carolina's governor. governor. MAGA loyalists, Trump, uh, who Trump called Martin Luther King Jr. on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Trump called him. That's amazing. <laughs> ah, yes. Advances in the battleground state. North Carolina shouldn't be a battleground state. They're trying to turn it into a battleground state. It's not a battleground state. Uh, Mark Robinson um, is just like the next level energy. Okay. I want to begin by stating that Mark Robinson is a phenomenon that was created by what we're doing right here. This is why this is important. Okay, this is why we're straight. We were streaming for how long were we on last night? Four hours at least. Like, what the reason why we do this is because this is the vectors of um, how we change and save the country. Like, us being able to coordinate, talk here, us being able to like have conversations every single day, bring on, uh, bring new energy on, like, bring on like energetic guests. Wesley Hunt was just killing it yesterday. It's awesome. Said he'd wear Trump shoes to the House floor to give a speech. Okay, <laughs> cold Trump shoes. Mark Robinson, a couple of years ago, I think the year was 2017 or 2018, Mark Robinson decided to go give a speech. Mark Robinson was simply a dude who liked his firearms. He is a dude who went down to his town, town council and gave a speech about new gun control measure. And that speech went thermonuclear viral. Mark Robinson used the energy of the internet, the energy of, of streaming, right? And it's in a rudimentary sense and a viral clip to springboard a now unbelievably successful political career. The man will be the next governor of North Carolina. It shows you like the power of what we're doing here. This is that speech that Mark Robinson delivered along with the victory remarks uh, from his victory last night. Ladies and gentlemen, the phenomenon, Mark Robinson, friend of the show, has been on the show, um, and is a rock star. Watch. I heard a whole lot of people in here talking tonight about this group and that group, and domestic violence, and blacks, these minorities and that minority. What I want to know is, when are you all going to start standing up for the majority? And here's who the majority is. I'm the majority. I'm a law-abiding citizen who's never shot anybody, never committed a serious crime, never committed a felony. I've never done anything like that. But it seems like every time we have one of these shootings, nobody wants to blame, put the blame where it goes, which is at the shooter's feet. You want to put it at my feet. You want to turn around and restrict my right, constitutional right that's spelled out in black and white. You want to restrict my right to buy a firearm and protect myself from some of the very people you're talking about in here tonight. It's ridiculous. I don't think Rod Serling could come up with a better script. It does not make any sense. The law-abiding citizens of this community and many communities around this country, we're the first ones taxed and the last ones considered and the first ones punished when things like this happens because our rights are the ones that are being taken away. That's the reason why I came out here today. Gun show or no gun show, NRA or no NRA. I'm here to stand up for the law-abiding citizens of this community. Tonight is the cultivation of a lot of doggone hard work. A lot of hard work and commitment. Not just by me and my team uh, and our campaign staff, but by a whole cadre of people across the state who believe in us, believe in our message, believe in our vision, and want to see North Carolina go into the right, in the right direction and did the hard work it took to get through this uh, primary. So thank you, each and every one of you. We were able to withstand withering attacks from our opponents, uh, all of which were baseless. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we firmly stand by what we believe in, who we are, and our story. Mmm. Mmm. Are you ready? 
Are you ready for a new, upright, strong version of populism in this country? People that are not weak, people that are strong, people that, and I quote, do not have jelly backs, as Mark Robinson would say. North Carolina, I'm very, very excited for you. Uh, Mark Robinson, we we look for, we've reached out. We want to book him on the show as soon as possible. We're massive fans of Mark Robinson. What you saw there is the power of what we are creating right now, the power of our movement, the power of what we, we do every single day. Because Mark Robinson went viral, and now he's about to go save his state. I think there's a Democrat, there's a Democrat governor running North Carolina right now, Roy Cooper. And he's going to take that governorship back off of the power of just defending his rights. If you, the criminals are going to have all the guns if you ban my guns. So I'm not going to allow that. It shows, it goes to show like the power that you still have in America. And we talk about this a lot, but how like the Republican party actually still belongs to the people. The Democrat party does not. The Democrat party has been sold lock, stock and barrel to the special interests of all of, of foreign nations and dictatorships. If you are a Democrat, you have no representation. Your, your representation is BlackRock, Vanguard, the Communist Chinese Party, and Klaus Schwab. Those are the people who run your party. You are nothing. Your vote doesn't matter. You're like, not, like nothing that you do, nothing that you do in this party, like counts. And the reason why I say that is not to disencourage people from voting at all, okay? I think that's like, I, like tried and true treasure. I'm talking about like, look at what they did to Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders was supposed to win in 2016 and in 2020. The guy got, in the words of Donald Trump, prolonged. Bernie Sanders was the man of the people. What happened to Bernie, libs? Yeah, Bernie Sanders took a third house and a book deal and said, see ya. They were able to stop him. They were able to do this with a guy like Joe Biden who came in fourth and came in fifth in Iowa and New Hampshire, respectively. Yeah, you don't have a real party. These people don't like you. They don't care about you. You should join the populist party. The water's warm. Like people that actually care about you. Unions are starting to figure that out. Working class people around the country are starting to figure that out. Mark Robinson figured that out. Mark Robinson talked about how he was a Democrat before. And now, ladies and gentlemen, he is strong. Mark Robinson, a great quote from him. We do not come from weak, ineffective, jelly back people that when in trouble, trouble happens, they find a safe space. Preach, brother. Let's go. We do not come from a weak, ineffective, jelly back people that when trouble happens, we find a safe space and try to find a counselor to talk about it. Americans stand up and fight for what they believe in and will put their lives on the line for what they believe in. They will put their money where their mouth is. And when the times get tough, you had best believe that Americans get going just like they did on Little Round Talk. They don't lay down. They don't back up. They don't quit. They stand up with everything in them and they push forward. You ready for that? You ready for that energy? What do uh, Democrats have, by the way? What do Democrats have as far as uh, energy is concerned? <laughs> well, they got Joe Biden, who, again, every single time he's out in public, um, looks like one of those Tesla robots in the way that he walks. We have proof of that. We have side by sides of Joe Biden walk like a robot. We do not know which version of Joe Biden uh, this is in the footage, but we do literally have proof of Joe Biden. Maybe Joe Biden is a robot. We have a the visiting angels ad of Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi walking together, creeping together across a tarmac. I mean, quite literally, like creeping together. Joe Biden is a very, very slow creep in many ways. And now we have Hillary Clinton, who is straight up saying it's time for us to accept the reality that Joe Biden is old. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Hillary Clinton saying Joe Biden, 81, is old. You, we should ignore that because we're saving democracy. <laughs> it's not going to work. The messaging doesn't work. You have every right to say that you're saving democracy, but you cannot say it if you are trying to put your political opponent in prison and trying to put his supporters in jail. You are not saving democracy. You are the enemy of democracy then. 
but Hillary Clinton has been the enemy of democracy for a very long time. Please don't ever look up what she said about Muammar Gaddafi in the Middle East. And Hillary Clinton now saying once again that Joe Biden's the man, Joe Biden's the guy. Let's ignore the fact that he's old. Let's ignore actually everything that he does. Orange man bad. Orange man bad. There's a there's a tactic that's being used here, by the way, um, and it's really sinister. We'll talk about it in a second. Here, watch uh, watch Hilda Beast. And you know, somebody the other day uh, said to me, Zerlina, well, but you know, uh, Joe Biden's old. I said, you know what? Joe Biden is old. Let's let's <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, accept the reality. Joe Biden is. So let's go ahead and accept the reality that Joe Biden's old. Joe Biden, just moments ago at the White House, uh, just like literally staring off into the abyss, like having having like a having like such a such a creepy moment. He's supposed to be taking questions at the White House during a panel. People start asking him questions, and Joe Biden just pulls just Joe Biden just pulls one of these. We got the clip, ladies and gentlemen. Let's roll it, baby. Joe Biden, remember, you're supposed to ignore all this. Go. I have a lot of questions. I better not start the questions. I'll get in trouble. What's your message for Thank Super you. Tuesday Thank voters? You. Everyone, please move this way. Super Thank Tuesday you. safe. Do you have a message Thank for voters? Much. Thanks. Come on. Thank you so much. Are you sick of a president that looks like this all the time? You sick of this? I'm a leader of the free, I'm a leader of the free world. I'm the most powerful man. It's the feature, not the bug, that Joe Biden is just a meat muppet. Um, they like somebody who's in control. Again, you don't have any power if you are a Democrat. You have no control over your party. You're literally just like a collectivist. You're a cog in the wheel. We have control over our party. just staring blindly in the middle distance. We have control over our party. We are making changes. We're doing some house cleaning in the Republican party. And we are delivering a party that actually represents its voters. That's what protecting democracy looks like, you jackasses. You people are just good little Marxists who just go along and do as you're told and who like the having the, the buttery words put into your ears about whatever, like equity and in inverting racial triangle up for the middle out and the top down and the bottom up. And you just like, you like the buzzwords. Just admit it. You're a sheep. Admit it. You're a slave. Admit it. You don't like being a free person. Just admit it. You like collectivism. You like fascistic tactics that shut down people that actually think for themselves and you like the fact that somebody is going to take care of you. You are not a man. You are not a strong person. You are a weakling. You are a slob. You are a sheep. Admit it. You like it. You like the slob. You like to eat the slob. That's who you are. Okay. You don't have an actual party. Everything is centrally organized and planned for you. You don't have, you have no free will. You are a slave. Just admit it. That's what you are inside of the modern day Democrat party. Okay. Just admit it. You're a slob and you don't like, you don't like the, the weight of existence. You don't like having like the burden of having to make your own choices or having to think for yourself. You like everything being vomited right in your mouth, like on the nature channel shows, like a mother bird comes home and go like pukes right in their kid's mouth. And the little, little birdies are like, Wah. you're like one of those little translucent skin rat looking birds. Fine. Okay. At least you're admitting it. At least you're admitting it. Low information brain waves, very low brain waves, not high. No, 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 no deltas here. Okay. Not high brain waves, very low, very low hum. Very couldn't heat up like a hot pocket in the microwave. Okay. Very, very low brain waves, but that's like peaceful to you. And you like that. And you're like, can't wait for the next Marvel movie. And so, and so that's like a good little existence for you. And you get tube fed, right? So good luck. We're going to do our best. We're going to go save America. And lucky for you, you get to actually be a communist living inside of a capitalist country, which is the best thing ever. 
best thing ever. Worst thing ever is to be anyone living inside of a communist country, even a communist, okay? Check out Stalin's purges or Mao Zedong's great leap forward. You'll find out how, how things worked out for communists inside of communist countries. But yeah, lucky you. We'll go, we're gonna roll up our sleeves and do the hard work for you, you jackals, you jack wagons. And you get to just sit around and bitch and mule and moan like you always do. And that's fine. We'll go save the country for you. And you can like, you can go whine about it. Rock salt tears into your soy lattes, soylent lattes, and complain about it to your wife and your wife's boyfriend that lives with you. Have a great time. Lucky for us, lucky for you, we exist and we're actually in control. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of somebody who thinks very freely, two people who think very freely, <laughs> two people that I'm quite a big fan of actually, Elon Musk and Donald Trump. Elon Musk and Donald Trump had a secret meeting. Now this is massive news. Wow, this is awesome. Donald Trump and Elon Musk had like a little tarmac meeting. ALX was on the live last night, the executive producer of the show. And he's like, I was tracking their, tracking their jets. And uh, I noticed that their jets landed at the same place, same time. And then they were like hanging out together. So ALX as ever, prescient with these things, uh, saying, yo, got, uh, got the inside scoop. Elon Musk may bankroll Trump. Elon Musk is done. So Hillary Clinton, don't kill worry about buying things. It looks like we may get our own big, big boy funder for America first. Here's a photo of uh, Elon Musk and Donald Trump at the White House. I haven't seen that photo. That's, a, that's an interesting one. So Elon Musk hasn't been invited back to the White House, even though he's like the number one defense contractor. He's totally in charge of like low space orbit satellites. The, the American military couldn't operate without Elon Musk, um, couldn't function without him. And of course, he like created the most successful electric car company. Um, and probably in five years, the only electric car company that's still viable uh, in the world. So this guy should be like a, a deep state and left with left wing darling. But of course, he thinks freely. And he's seen what Marxism does to a country in South Africa. And so Elon Musk is like, mm, don't want to do that here. And now he's meeting with Donald Trump. Ooh, Ooh. wow. What? Well, what a meeting. I, I don't. I don't think there's another meeting on planet earth that I wish I would had a camera at. I don't think there's another meeting. I mean, you'd have to, I'd have to go back to like biblical and ancient times to like find something else that would be like as tantalizing as this. Elon Musk and Donald Trump got together, both of them billionaires. And Elon Musk is considering whether to throw his $200 billion fortune behind Donald Trump. Ooh. Oh, you want the fear. You want the seething meltdowns. We got them for you. Have a watch of MSNBC. Let's salt the lib one more time. One more, one more salt that lib. One more salt that lib. Let's salt these libs. They are now losing their minds because George Soros doesn't even have like, George Soros, like Elon Musk makes George Soros look like a guy who should be panhandling outside of the 7-Eleven on the street corner. Like Elon Musk is so much richer than George Soros. And look at the devastation that George Soros has wrought on the country, the literal rot on the country. And so like libs who knew, know the value of having like a billionaire in your back pocket to destroy this place uh, are now seeing the paradigm shift where a billionaire could save this place. Wouldn't that be a remarkable turnabout? Here's the meltdown, ladies and gentlemen. Let's salt that lib. Go. <laughs> Donald Trump seeking cash infusion meets with Elon Musk. A New York Times reporting that Donald Trump met with Elon Musk and also a few other wealthy Republican donors um, seeking a cash infusion to support his campaign. That was within the last few days. That was reportedly over the weekend. According to the Times, Trump is now hoping to have a one on one meeting just with Elon Musk, who reportedly has been saying that he believes it is, quote, essential to defeat Joe Biden in November, quoting the New York Times there. Elon Musk, of course, um, is one of the two richest people on Earth. He could single handedly erase any financial advantage Democrats might have heading into the general election in November uh, if he decided to and if he wanted to play it that way. Um, what would that mean for what happens to the world and the republic? 
And I, we're sure he's that money is not to pay Donald Trump's legal bills. Guess what? It can. And when yeah. we all sit here Money's and go, fungible. oh my gosh, yeah. Donald Trump owes eighty-three million dollars on E. Jean Carroll, yeah, he owes four hundred million here, and we say he doesn't have that money. Guess what? Whether it's Elon Musk or all sorts of other supremely wealthy wealthy forces out there, they would be happy. To, to, to pay the bills for someone who could be the next president. Yeah, Elon Musk owns the, the president FTC. of the United States. He hates the FTC. And how much would he like it if he then owned the Donald president? Trump. <laughs> oh, man, it's rich. It's rich. Coming from the party that just before Congress last week and this week, admitting that the Russians padded the bank accounts of the Bidens, the communist Chinese padded the bank accounts of the Bidens, the Ukrainians padded the bank accounts of the Bidens. Boy, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be something to have the power of the presidency? First off, that's how it's always worked. You harpies, second off. Like, don't, the, the, look at high dollar owners of the Democrat party. You're upset that one rich guy wants to donate to Donald Trump and you have, have you checked in the high dollar donors of the Democrat party? Joe Biden was just in Hollywood. Joe Biden was just in Silicon Valley, walking around life alert commercial, visiting angels, certainly not visiting angels, visiting demons in Hollywood, but nonetheless taking their cash. Democrats beat Republicans in high dollar donors. Like this is a relatively modern phenomenon in the last 30 years. It used to be Republicans, yes, had like big money party. Now that's totally flipped. And now Democrats totally clobber Republicans in high dollar rich guy donors. The inversion here is remarkable. The meltdown is remarkable. The daftness is remarkable. They just think you're an idiot. I don't know how else to say it. If you're a Democrat, the people who talk to you think you're stupid. They know you have like low microwave brain and you it's not like super not high occupancy capacity frontal cortex feeding tube and you you, you just you just drink the vomit that's what they 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 just they, they think you're stupid i don't know how else to say it like imagine hating your audience this month you lie to them imagine being so disrespectful to your audience and just lying to them photo of elon musk and donald trump in the oval office is totally badass i don't know how i hadn't seen this one before he looks happy look at elon he looks happy Dude's like, dude, it's chilling. <laughs> Joe Biden won't eat with, meet with Elon Musk. What's that about? What's that about? I don't know. Joe Biden said, if you don't vote for me, then you ain't black. But Elon Musk is, by definition, an African-American. So I don't know. Is there something there? We're not sure. Donald Trump, though, very happy to clap hands and backs with Elon Musk and say, hey, let's go make America great again. It's awesome. We look forward to uh, to exploring what happens next. Elon Musk obviously loves free speech, obviously loves his country. Last night, at around midnight on our stream, we had Vivek Ramaswamy join. Uh, we thought, well, this is pretty awesome. There were hundreds of thousands of people actually watching the stream last night. But typically, um, we would want to have that booking for our regularly scheduled programming here. So we're going to, uh, ladies and gentlemen, play you Vivek Ranswamy and what he told us last night on the very heels, at the heels of Donald Trump's speech. Again, this was being broadcast well near midnight last night. And so we think that maybe some people may have missed it and we thought it was a very important conversation. We talked about Elon Musk, in fact. Uh, we talked about Elon Musk, we talked about culture, we talked about Donald Trump, and we talked about the path forward. And Vivek Ramaswamy being a, like, a very, very sober and very, very thoughtful, obviously, perspective on the path forward. Really talking about putting meat on the bones for what does the Republican Party stand for? Can't be standing against something. What do they stand for? Democrat Party? For, for total collectivism and Marxism and treating you like a servant, like a slave. What does the Republican Party stand for? These are the topics explored uh, with Vivek last night, right after Donald Trump gave his victory speech. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, are going to play you that interview. Um, but in a moment, um, I do want to preview one other thing that we have coming up. On Friday, we will not have a program. We'll have a show tomorrow. We won't have a show on, uh, on Friday. We'll be heading to Miami for a series of really awesome things. We're gonna be uh, filming some specials on a, on, a on a Trump property. 
Uh, we're going to be filming our Trump Cribs episodes in Miami, and we're going uh, we're going to be doing some backstage work with the uh, with the UFC. We're very excited to uh, announce, and so we got some some big things coming, and we're pumped about it. We're hyped about it. It's you who allow us to do these things, who like who like f- fuel all of this, and we just say thank you. While the left may hate their audience and may hate their voters and may despise them, we do not. Uh, la- last couple of years have been a practice, whether it's Disney, Marvel, Star Wars, Target, whatever, has been a practice in like despising your audience and treating them like garbage. And we will not do that. We are like, bu- we are going to work. We are grinding, grinding to make sure that like one, we have coverage of everything here. And then two, that we're actually like delivering and creating culture. And that's really, really important. When we travel, uh, as we will be doing starting tomorrow, when we travel, you know, we always make sure that we have the wellness company at hand. We always ensure that we are uh, safe and zipped up and that we have, um, well, people at our back, good doctors at our back that make sure that we stay healthy. Couldn't do any of this when you're under the weather. You need to be prepared and not scared for whatever little uh, new special pandemic they have planned for all of us. Be ready for anything. The wellness company provides a medical kit that contains an assortment of life-saving medications as well as a guidebook to aid in the safe use of all of these life-saving medications. Rest assured, knowing that these emergency antibiotics, antivirals, and antiparasitics are at hand. To order, go to twc.health slash Benny, twc.health slash Benny, and enter the code Benny for 10% off. Ladies and gentlemen, see site for details. Prescriptions may be required. Okay, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, here is our conversation with Vivek Ranswamy uh, last night about these massive topics of import, and most importantly, Elon Musk and Donald Trump. Ugh, Eli, they, they're they both very good friends with Vivek Ranswamy. Did Elon Musk tell Donald Trump to pick Vivek as VP? You know, You know he did. You know he did. Here we go, baby. The man himself. Vivek, what's up, man? How's it going, dude? It's a great night. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that this Republican primary has been over for a long time, but it is over yet again. One more time tonight. (laughs) Uh, I'm very sorry to report to you some terrible news. Nikki Haley has won Vermont. (laughs) Well, it reminds me of D.C. I I think... uh, which are the provinces of Ukraine that she couldn't name? These are the ones that are actually uh, their delegates are actually coming in for. Uh... <laughs> so, so the the Ukrainian delegates voted in that DC primary, I think, and that's exactly what we what we saw there. She she's more or less irrelevant, but she's a representation of what we're up against. And I don't just mean in our own party; I mean a managerial class that pervades both parties. And I think it's going to be the same managerial class that gets Joe Biden out of the way, which I think is actually the trap that we're at risk of now falling into, Benny, is we're now trained, right? I think to have some level of complacency, satisfaction about tonight. And so, yes, you say great night. I agree. It is a great night. I think that that's a danger. I think that that kind of attitude can also risk creating a complacency. We got to be insurgent, not incumbent. We have to Mm -hmm. actually be the upstart not the people who take victory for granted. Trump in 2016 was that. Our founding fathers were that. And I think that that's the spirit we have to keep alive in 2024 rather than, you know, just making this about defeating Joe Biden, laughing at the old man that can't put sentences together, tripping on stairs, all of which is true. All of which, you know, the guy who can't stand trial somehow is actually, or even even be a witness in a trial is somehow competent to run the country. Yeah, we get that Joe Biden is is a joke and is a puppet for the managerial class. But understand that come this summer, they're going to move him out of the way. It's not him that we're actually running against. And so while we're appropriately recognizing, even celebrating, I think, a, a victorious step in the progress, I think that we have to not fall into the trap of complacency, which I do think in some sense has been laid for us by the other side that wants us to focus on Biden when in fact it's going to be somebody else that Donald Trump is actually running against later this year. So you have long uh, said that this is going to be Michelle Obama potentially. Uh, if you were to put money on it, Michelle Obama has come out with an official statement saying, not going to be me. I'm not going to run for president. Then she went and did an interview on British television saying it's not going to be me. Then she tried out David Axelrod to say it's not going to be Michelle Obama. Uh, your thoughts on that? Do you think that's still cloak and dagger? 
uh, sleight of hand. Lady, or do yeah, you the think lady doth s- protest too much, methinks, I think. <laughs> okay. What right. I would say in this case. And, my, and that might be, you know who's not protesting too much, which lady is not protesting too much, is Hillary Clinton, because she actually wants it. Michelle Obama, I don't think, particularly wants it. I actually kind of believe that she doesn't want it, but I don't think that she's going to have much of a choice in the matter. I'm less in the business, Benny, of predicting which individual it is or isn't going to be. I might be wrong about the Michelle Obama specific prediction, but I bring this up because I care about our own side not falling into the trap of thinking that we've got this in the bag. We're running against Joe Biden. He's a defeatable alternative. Our entire message focused on his individual vulnerabilities from his age to his cognitive deficits, to his son, to his son's cognitive deficits, to his son's corruption, to his own corruption. All that needs to be observed. But if that becomes our focal point, it's like a feint in war, right? A feigned retreat where you're led to a false target when in fact you have the rug then pulled out from under you only a matter of months later, which is what I think is coming this summer. And, you know, I think it's one of the things you're good at. I think that it's going to take people who are willing to skate to where the puck is going, name a problem. That's in some ways how you actually avoid that problem. And here that problem would be the element of surprise. If we know that we're not running against Biden, then our whole message needn't be tethered to a Biden specific message. It can actually be, who would have ever thought, a message about what our own actual affirmative agenda is. That speech that Trump just gave, I thought, was was excellent in that respect. He actually nailed a lot of our own affirmative agenda. He went straight down the list. Drill, baby, drill, largest mass deportation in history, actually fighting crime in this country, make America great again, what that actually means, great. That's what we need to be talking about. I'd say a little bit less of the of the biden trashing not because Mm -hmm. it's not justified not because it's not all true but to the opposite point it's because that's actually falling into i believe a trap that has been laid that we need to avoid we need an agenda that we stand for irrespective of which puppet it is michelle obama hillary clinton gavin newsom doesn't matter that's actually how we immunize ourselves against that risk so what you saw and what we have been predicting is that this is going to be now a gear shift to a brand new general election, Donald Trump, and that you're going to have now a a different Trump on the trail. He's been obviously very savage uh, against all of his opponents, and he's been in campaign mode against a Republican primary, and you're going to see a shift. What's that shift going to look like? What's going to change? You're already starting to see sort of a a resetting of the table, Um, but you've obviously become quite close with Donald Trump and dare I say are advising him uh, on a number of issues. Uh, He clearly is listening to you. Uh, What does the shift in the Donald Trump to general election mode look like? Yeah, I I think of it less as a shift, Benny, but more, you know, you've got different different tenors that you can play, right, as a musician. And and I think he's going to hit some different keys than he's hit so far. And I think there's a time and place for everything. He's already doing it. Look at that speech he gave yesterday, right after that Supreme Court ruling. I think that's been one of his best yet. I would say one of his best ever yet, actually, because it wasn't particularly about him dancing on anybody's grave. It was actually a tenor of national unity. And I think that was really fitting yesterday. The Supreme Court's ruling was about national unity itself. And I think him delivering that message about national unity, I think, was really fitting for that moment as well. And so I think that that's going to be either in so many words or even if not in so many words, the core message is actually that Donald Trump, not Joe Biden or not anybody else from the other side, is going to be the one who actually unites this country. And I think that that's something that our side needn't be shy about admitting that we want. I think most of us don't want a national divorce. I think most of us do want to live in one nation under God, just as our founding fathers envisioned 250 years ago. And so I think Donald Trump is going to be that kind of figure from now through Election Day that revives that spirit of national unity in his own in his own way. And I think that that's going to be his own authentic way. But I think that less of a shift, but more of an awakening of something that may have been less obvious to people who have watched him in the past, but I know is in his heart and I think is coming out more and more. And, you know, I do think that's the right way to go. And I am fully in support of that message all the way through the general election in November. So it's a good night. And uh, I'm glad you had me on for a, for a few minutes, Benny, before we rocked and rolled, but thanks for, uh, thanks for doing what you're doing. 
I know I know that you I know that you are a father to young children and I don't want to I don't want to keep you I have to ask you one more thing. I have to ask you one more because ALX broke the news uh earlier in the call that Elon Musk was meeting potentially with Donald Trump. That both their jets landed the same place and that they had that they had a meeting. Now you're very close with both these guys and you've worked very closely with both these guys. And we've talked about Elon Musk publicly and how valuable obviously the X platform is to free speech but also for just the future of the country as a free nation. Um, your thoughts on that meeting? I don't, I obviously don't want you to reveal anything that's private, but like, what's going on, well, man? Here, here, I'll just, just take a, take a big step back. I mean, I'll be respectful of my conversations with both those guys and, and, you know, let's just take the big takeaways in terms of where we are right now. And, you know, you bring up two people who I think do embody a lot of that founding spirit, people who yes. can, achieve something with their own dedication and with their own willpower without feeling constrained. I think that's part of why I've frankly had, I think a, a, a relatively fast and warm and natural friendship with both those guys is that part of what we miss in our culture is that right now you're told to shut up and sit down and do as you're told and, and work in your lane. Whereas our founding fathers were people who didn't believe in those lanes, right? You could be an mm -hmm. inventor of the Franklin stove while also signing the Declaration of Independence, while also working on a remedy to a common cold. If you're Donald Trump, I'm going to start a social media platform that's a competitor after having been a real estate tycoon, going on to be the president of the United States. And actually, you know what? If I want to do some sneakers along the way, I'm going to do it. If you're going to be Elon Musk, you know, from electric cars to, to going in space to actually expressing his own opinion about what's happened in the border crisis in the United States. I'm not going to just swim in my own lane because I'm a person who transcends those boundaries. I'm wired in my own in my own way the same way. You know, just because I'm a biotech entrepreneur today doesn't mean I'm not going to be an entrepreneur competing against a different incumbent like BlackRock. Doesn't mean it's going to stop me from running for president of the United States. That's the founding spirit we need to revive. That's what Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin and George Washington did. And I think that you see some of that in the likes of Elon Musk and Donald Trump in, in today's environment. And, you know, I think it's a good thing when we live in a 1776 moment to have some 1776 figures who can step into that vacuum. And uh, and I love what each of those guys is doing. They're doing their part. I'm going to try to do mine. And uh, you know what? I think that we're going to win the American Revolution in spirit. We don't have to fight the revolution. We have to just revive the ideals of it. That's the work we have cut out ahead of us this year. And I think both those guys are going to be important in making it happen. And I'm going to do whatever I can too. I mean, I think Donald Trump would look great in a powdered wig. Uh, you can <laughs> quote me on that. All right. This is one man's opinion. Okay. Uh, Joy Reid has stolen his haircut. So maybe, <laughs> maybe switch it up, you know, right? Like maybe to get the powdered she's, wig. She's, maybe she's pulling the founding father thing too. Although I don't know if that's exactly <laughs> what she's going for. <laughs> Two founding fathers in to the renaissance of the founding fathers in Donald Trump and Elon Musk, something that you've paraphrased before, but I think something that is a, a, a really um, profound uh, way of looking, way of looking at our current landscape. It's revolutionary, uh, Vivek Ranswamy. And we thank you so much for being on our live tonight. We'll see you, man. Thank you. All right. Three and a half hours being live last night covering the Donald Trump victories. Ladies and gentlemen, there's something that we haven't done on this program, which is to play our Donald Trump victory stinger. I'm very, very proud of it. Very proud of this stinger. Uh, Royce, this is something that we had designed special for last night. Uh, and I mean, we encourage actually all corporate media to follow you. You can steal this. Just take it from us. OK, you should play all corporate media, Fox News, MSNBC, CNN. You should play this stinger anytime there is a Donald Trump victory. OK, here it is. It is it is here. It is free to you from our show, our gift to the entire media landscape. All right. <laughs> Got to get the dance move down. Woo. We are victorious. I guess we do have a Donald Trump. We do have a Donald Trump victory. Uh, Joe Biden is the first, pre first president in 44 years. First incumbent president, resident of the White House in 44 years to lose a primary. Again, he lost yesterday in America, Samoa.
We we will do our best to get the guy on who beat Joe Biden. Donald Trump has beat Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley is now out of the race. It is Donald Trump's Republican Party, and we are, ladies and gentlemen, building a movement. If you should be a part of that movement, please join the Benny Brigade. You can go to BennyJohnson.com and join into our exclusive members-only club. This is the saltiest club on the internet. You even get a keychain shipped directly from us to you, made by American veterans and by American leathersmiths, made by some of our friends at Public Square. We are supporting American companies and supporting American manufacturing and industry in our own way for the price of, I don't know, uh, what what's the price of a Wendy's hamburger? Apparently, they get surge, surge, surge charging now. So I, for the price of a Chick-fil-A waffle fries per month, you can support our network and keep us independent so that we can continue to do these lives, that we can continue to break the internet, uh, we can continue to piss off our haters, and we can continue to uh, stay exceedingly exceedingly salty ladies and gentlemen uh we do indeed want libs to cry more uh you can get some of our you can get some of our uh famous mugs and cups including one that's shaped like a tank shell all of it made here in america the benny brigade rolls on to victory consider joining it would be a blessing to us and also keeps again our reporting and our content independent here as ever as ever we say thank you no matter what no matter where you're watching Got a lot of like, it's amazing when we do super chats, we get a lot of people watching like from New Zealand and from England and Canada, those people so based in Canada, no matter where you are, you need the good news. And some days there is no good news. Now that's just the way it works in media. There's a lot of good news today and we are spoiled for choice. Our cup runneth over this week, our salt, our cup runneth over, uh, overflowing in salt. But no matter what, we end our show with good news every day. The verse of the day, ladies and gentlemen, our verse today from Psalms. Love a good psalm. Sing praises, O Lord. You, his saints, give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Saying that you just need to have faith in something that is constant in life. Do not put your faith in men. Donald Trump, Joe Biden, I don't care. Don't put your faith in man. That It is a bad idea, all right? is a bad idea. You should fight battles here. We'll be judged for our actions in this place. So you should fight. You should not think that like life is inconsequential and you, you, you have no obligations, right? You need to fight and you need to fight for what is righteous and what is good. And you, you need to prevent the moral atrocities that are happening in this, in this nation right now. And maybe we will see God's anger. Maybe that's what's going on. We don't know. We don't know. Don't question God, but here's the point. The point is, it is for us to have faith. You must have faith. And that faith will be everlasting. God is eternal. And we will have victory in the end. Do not be downtrodden. Be uplifted. March forward. Be happy warriors. You cannot defeat a happy army. Uh, you cannot defeat an army of happy warriors. I am marching right alongside you, fighting right alongside you. It's your boy, Benny. This is The Benny Show. See ya.